Yes, hello today. Look, we've got Zenkai Awakening Cabbage. So basically, let's take a look at this guy real quick. But before that, let's just cue the intro. Welcome to my channel, where cringy intros are cringy. All right, so here we are. He's at seven stars. Uh, not much to say other than let's take a look at his stats real quickly. So at seven stars, his stats, I would say, at least on the defensive side, are definitely more impressive than his offensive stats. Now let's just take a look at the moment we limit break him. Um, yeah, his defensive stats are pretty solid. His blast attack is also pretty solid. His strike attack is also good for what it is, but when co in comparison, it definitely feels like it could be very lackluster. So there is that. So just on the offset, his stats aren't very impressive. However, they're not bad. They're, they're not bad at all. Um, now, with that being said, stats aren't everything. In fact, they're usually not even what will decide a unit's relevancy. And on top of that, this guy is a support type, so as a result, I wouldn't expect his stats to be over the roof. All right, so let's take a look at his arts. So it's what you expect from it. Oh, let's take a look at Gallic Gun. So we got increase of damage for ten uh, timer counts to allies. I question how relevant that is, but here we are. And then we have 25% to damage inflicted by allies for 30 timer counts. This I can see a lot more relevancy. Although at the same time, you could just do switch ins and switch outs with Vados. So right now, Kaba for me is we're deciding on whether he's worth it based upon if he can replace Vados or something of that nature. Or, or potentially what you would have to do is maybe you put Kaba on the team, but he just buffs Vados or something of that matter. So let, let, let's take a look. Let's see. So let's take a look at his main ability real quick. Restore own health by 35%. Day. Restores allies other than this character's health by 10%. Uh, Cancels al allies attribute downgrades in abnormal conditions, which require 15 timer counts to pass. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's solid. Um, it's, I feel like it's the exact same. I don't think anything has changed. I could be wrong. Maybe they added something to this. Honestly, I don't really care to check because the old Kaba was no longer relevant in any shape, way, or form, and it was just a real eh character to use. So whether they updated this or not doesn't matter, because now with this update, Super Saiyan Kaba for sure is usable, which is nice. All right, let's take a look at the Z abilities. We got 20% to the green or tag universe 6 max base health during battle. So this guy doesn't exactly go straight into rival universe. He is restrictive, which is interesting because you would think for a, for a Zenkai, you'd want him to be a little bit more open in regards to what he buffs, but no, 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 it's just universe six or green, which is okay if you really think about it because um, there are a whole bunch of rival universe characters that happen to be universe six as well that can be played on a rival universe team. Uh, let's say you don't run the pure hit, you're going to probably run then the uh, purple Zenkai 7 Caulifla, which in that case, she's Universe 6, so she actually benefits from this, which just makes her a bigger tank. Uh, Vados included, so she'll get extra health. And on top of that, she will definitely get boosted by this. In fact, actually, you could also say that Jiren uh, is also another one that gets boosted by this, just as heavily as Vados. So there is an argument for him on a rival universe team, even if he doesn't buff everyone just because he'll be buffing someone like Jiren, Vados, Caulifla, right? Just those alone speak, uh, speak volumes. On top of that, if you're running Kefla, like the Super Saiyan 2 green or the red one, uh, he will also buff her. Uh, Champa is another one that will get buffed. Now, if you're running Android 17, the, the Tournament of Power one, uh, obviously not. So again, this restricts your team formatting, but if you do choose to run him, this is the way you would probably do it. You just find units that do get buffed so that they can get the buff health buff and go from there. All right, let's take a look at Diligent Effort. So we got 20% to damage inflicted for 20 timer counts uh, when this character enters the battlefield. Okay, blast damage inflicted increased increases according to the number of timer counts elapsed with the current character up to 70%. So three counts, it's 40 six counts at 70. Okay, and then effects reset after switch. So this reminds me of Namiku, but 
It's interesting because Namaku is a last man standing unit. He is a great uh, unit to basically just kind of deal damage, switch out, or uh, play around with the opponent. There's a lot of components to Namaku that work. In this situation, it's interesting because I don't really always feel like a support unit is someone that I actually want to keep into battle. But let's say he has to be a last man standing unit for God knows what reason. This is actually not a bad thing. In fact, actually, this definitely helps him out. Now, of course, since it is only really Blast Damage that is getting boosted up, I am worried about that. Because that means if your hand is full of Strike cards, you're in a big pickle. Whereas if your hand is full of Blast cards, you know, there is, there are, there is hope. And if you have a blue card, then that's also just as nice, if not better. So definitely Super Saiyan Kaba I, I I feel like they are overbalancing him just because he's a support type unit. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I can't say I'm extremely impressed. But with that being said, that's just the first skill, so let's go on to the second. Falling effects occur when this character is switched to standby. 40% uh, of the strike dam damage inflicted by allied character, Vegeta, or tag rival universe for 15 timer counts. Right, so he will be working with Vegeta for those of you that want to do that. Uh, it's definitely doable because of his stats alone, and you can definitely get away with it. I'm just thinking in terms of synergy, if two people that are of a similar skill level pair up, anyone that is running Rival Universe over just running a Vegeta fam with Kaba is going to do, the Rival Universe is most likely going to win. And that's just because overall, in terms of stats, synergy, in terms of how they tank, it's... A no-brainer who is going to have more health, who's going to be able to survive a lot better. So as a result, I have to really just say that like this whole Vegeta thing is a little unnecessary if you're not going to give me a way to actually synergize and boost Vegeta. And there is a fruit fly. And how did a fruit fly get in here? I will never know. But it is annoying the hell out of me. All right. Then we also have 20% of the blast damage inflicted by allied character Vegeta or tag universe 6 for 15 timer counts. Same thing. Uh, but in this situation, because of there's so much of a split, it's actually a three-way split. I'm at cross at a crossroad here. I see. I feel like if you're to set up a rival universe slash universe six team, this could actually work. Just ignore the Vegeta part. It's almost unnecessary, honestly. Uh, if you want to do it and be and be uh, you know YOLO it a little, or just prove to me that this is a god unit. You could do that, but it doesn't actually negate the facts here, which is, it's just not really relevant to Vegeta. Just play, if you're playing Vegeta, just play a Vegeta fam team, and just ignore it altogether. Also, this is annoying, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill that fruit fly, and I'll be right back. Alright, so next up we have Realized Power, so reduces damage received by 10% when this character enters the battlefield, cannot be stacked. Only 10%? Why? This can get canceled, mind you. You might as well, if you're going to say 10%, if you're going to give me 10, give me cannot be stacked and also cannot be canceled. Don't just give me cannot be stacked. So you're telling me my almost irrelevant defense boost can be removed. Huh. And then inflicts enemy with attribute downgrade plus 2% to substitution count for 10 timer counts after enemy attack is over. Okay, so it's not after each attack, it's actually, well, actually, that would be broken if it was. It's after every, after a combo is done. Okay, that's not so bad, that's not so bad. Overall, I'm not a big fan of this. As a support unit, like, the only relevancy I can see in regards to this is that, let's say you're up against hybrids, they're using the uh, uh, Super Saiyan that transforms into Super Saiyan 2 Purple Gohan, they attack you, they hit you. And then, because they've used a green card, they have lower substitution count, but you've now just increased their substitution count, so they can't, they switch out, they won't be able to switch in as effectively. Okay. Like, I, I'm really having to put, I'm having to push it just to see how relevant this is, and I'm not impressed on paper. And then Concealed Might. Applies the following effects to self every time when faced with an enemy. Stores key by 30, in, uh, increases damage by 15% to dem uh, for time, 10 timer counts. 
minus two to strike and blast arts cost for 10 timer counts. And this can obviously be stacked. So obviously with a strike card, he'll be doing okay damage, but with his blast card, if there's a certain amount of timer counts passed when this has also occurred, um, and you can somehow get them to switch multiple times, he will actually be doing effective damage. But the problem here is that this, when you're up against units like this, you just need to know their kit. And if you know Kaba's kit is that he gets buffed each time he sees a new unit or how long he stays in, then your goal is to win the neutral. Because if you win the neutral, they're going to be forced to switch. And that resets this boy. Just straight up. And one thing I can definitely say in regards to this uh, new setup is that this... Okay, one second, guys. This fruit fly is a pain in the butt, and I couldn't kill it the last time. I'm going to kill it this time, and I'll see you then. Emily, the fruit fly is attacking me. It's trying to go in my mouth. And I don't know why. There's no food here. All right, so we're back. I did not kill the fruit fly. It is too fast, too small, too agile for me. So let's try to get through this as quickly as possible. Overall, in regards to Super Saiyan Kaba, just like I said, um, I think the, the main issue that I have is that there are too many units that he's competing with. You have Jiren, you have Super Saiyan 2 Green Kefla, you have Vados, specifically Vados. I think Vados is probably the biggest contender to Kappa, but Jiren would be second. For those of you that are like, Super Saiyan 2 Green Kefla, well, you're not wrong. She's actually still good, uh, despite having her having like literally zero defense. At least she is a great rising rush farming unit, as well as just enabling to win neutral matches a lot easier than with a lot of other units. Jiren included. Uh, Vados is more of a support type, and when I'm looking for support, you're really competing between realistically Vados and Kaba, and honestly. Vados offers more and is less restrictive. Now, with that being said, if you're running Rival Universe, could you run Super Saiyan Kaba as your kind of pseudo health buff unit for some of the units on your team and kind of neglect a couple based upon uh, a more, you know, structured and best version of Rival Universe that you can possibly get? Sure, I will kill you, uh, but I will try and I will fail. I have failed. I have failed miserably. It, 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 it did not work. It, but yeah, like you could run Kaba on the team, but realistically, I think the majority for now, in, unless we get more Universe 6 units, the majority of rival Universe teams for now will not even really bat too much of an eye on Super Saiyan Kaba outside of being a little bit gimmicky or trying something flashy and new. So would I say he's currently worth it? No, he is not currently worth it. Um. Now, with that being said, if you're a rival universe main of any sort, or universe six main, although I, I question that one a little bit, but let's say you're a rival universe main, would I still get him? Yes, I, I would definitely get him because I can definitely see in the future he could definitely become impactful. In fact, in fact, uh, you know, on paper, yes, he does not look he doesn't look too impressive, but that needs to be also tried out in battle. We can't actually decide everything just based upon what he looks like, but I can definitely say, for me, I'm not going to be getting him. Uh, on my free-to-play account, he will also not be got. I have no intention of spending any CC on this dude. Uh, as you guys know, whenever I do these, is it worth it? I look for it in regards to whether I would do it, whether a, a specific person that runs a specific team should do it, and so on and so forth. So if you're a rival universe, and you're on the fence about this, and let's let's put it this way. If you're on the fence about whether you should get Super Saiyan Kaba or not, don't do it. <laughs> you need to be sure that you think you need him. If you're not sure, don't get him. And if you uh, later on realize, hmm, I want him and I need him, then that's fine. Do it. On top of that, this guy will come back eventually, so there is that. So on to his top stats, just real quick, just so we can take a look at top, because I will be applying now how he does not uh, tournament of power two so let's take a look we got according to battle turn first turn 20 percent the minus to damage received and then 40 percent to blast damage inflicted on the second turn plus third turn restores health by five percent okay that's not bad i would prefer if, if third turn onwards or even like second turn onwards he starts healing himself but eh, it's okay 
And then diligent effort, 20% of the damage inflicted by allied type rival universe or character Vegeta in range for one turn on the sides of him and then inflicts all enemies with, okay. Okay. Had to be downgraded plus 20% to blast damage received for one turn. Okay. Overall, he's not a bad tournament power unit. Uh, I would definitely say that he is strange in the fact that I feel like there's a couple of things they could have done better for him, but overall, it's not so bad. Green or tag in verse six, max base health, okay? And then, yeah. Okay, so what I could definitely say is that Super Saiyan Kaba, in regards to top, if you're running Rival Universe, he's not bad. I could definitely see people running him, for sure. Especially if they put him as tier one, uh, then he will definitely be placed in because he will be a tanky unit. He will have some uh, health recovery, and because most of the time we don't finish things any sooner than the third round, then this unit is definitely going to get see some healing, which means that overall... I definitely say that he is a good tournament power unit. Not the best, but he's solid. He's a good addition to the team. It's just that I wonder if it's really worth putting 7,000 Chrono Crystals just to have him maxed out. Roughly 7,000. Just for tournament power. You know, that, that, that's, a, that's a big question. That's questionable for me. And honestly, turn, like rival universe teams have been already doing okay without him but i digress anyways guys that's the video thank you guys so much for watching please don't hesitate to tickle the like button you haven't already subscribed and click at the bell for more notifications so you never miss another of my videos have yourselves a salty day and i will see you in the next video and each like will go towards the killing of this darn fruit fly thanks for stopping by hope you had a time phil g phil g